Hello, and welcome to dinner party tonight. Today we're doing Thanksgiving sides. We're not doing the whole meal. Uh, we know you guys are capable of doing that. We're just gonna give you some interesting different sides that you can include in your Thanksgiving. We're gonna be making carrot shooters. Very delicious, bright way to start the meal. We're going to be doing something called green packets, which are a demanded favorite at my Thanksgivings. We're going to do a chicken ballotine. Don't be scared, it's really easy. You, you can use a, a sous vide machine and you can also poach it, but it's very easy and very flashy. And then we're going to make a beautiful blackberry pie, possibly with a lattice top, if it works out. What you guys may not know, and you'll have to look back at the other episode, was the last time we shot, Leonard was developing a new eye ulcer. Can you believe that? If you look at it, you can see that he's squinting. But he has fully recovered. However, you may notice that his little tummy is shaved. Why, you ask? Well, because on Labor Day Sunday, sort of like Thanksgiving last year, Leonard swallowed a dime and he had to have emergency surgery by the incomparable Dr. Rick Altieri, who basically saved Leonard's life. It was a nightmare. And I had um, 12 guests, about, pretty much, that I was cooking for. It was really awesome. And they were, thank God, uh, good friends. But anyway, Dr. Altieri saved Leonard's life, and for that, we are eternally grateful. Do you guys know we were in Vanity Fair? I mean, is that insane or what? I had the most incredible dinner with Richard Lawson, who's the chief critic of Vanity Fair, who is an unbelievably charming dinner partner. And we had this sort of lovely two and a half hour dinner. And then he gave us the most incredible shout out in an article about much bigger YouTube stars than Dinner Party Tonight. Anyway, look who's on the cover of our copy of Vanity Fair. See, we have Joaquin Phoenix, but it's a nice cover. And it's green, it's very jolly. So anyways, that was thrilling. Thank you, Richard, amazing. Guys, did you guys try these yet? I know they're on, they were on the, uh, what do you call it? The crafty table or whatever, what's it called? Lynn said we couldn't eat them yet. You can't eat them because I wanna show you this. The Donut Project in the West Village, they are superb. Look at these. Will you please look at that? They're consistently, shockingly beautiful. This is a maple cruller. That's so good. Oh my God. Wow, that's exceptional. If you ever come to New York City, go to the Donut Project. They have two locations. One is on Morton and one is in Midtown. I'm sorry, I don't know where it is, but Donut Project. Delicious. Now you can eat them, guys. Do, 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 do. Carrot shooters. Um, shooters are a great little side. We made pea shooters. These are a tiny bit different. But carrot shooters are more sort of fall-like, okay, I think. And uh, they're also, as we've said before, a great stalling technique because you can serve them the little shooters and hold off on uh, your meal if you have a problem, if you have a mistake. This is served cold. Carrot shooters, couldn't be easier. I just wanna make one comment. We are still under construction, as you can see in the backyard. And there's actually work occurring in the house today. So if you hear any banging, screaming, running, rioting of any kind, it's the workmen who are completing my project. Carrot shooters, basically you're gonna take carrots. Now, if they are particularly not dirty looking after you've washed them, you don't have to peel them. If you want this to be pristinely bright orange, I would suggest peeling them. You do not have to peel them. So I just peeled them and I cut them into segments like this, in segments, big segments. Nobody's gonna see them, you're gonna puree this. And you're gonna blanch it briefly in boiling water so that they're a tiny bit soft. You can also put a little lemon juice in the water. This helps retain the color a tiny bit. Um, it's not necessary, and don't worry about seeds because you're, you're not gonna use the water. I was asked several times, should we blanch the carrots while we're waiting to shoot? And I said, no, I'll cook the carrots. But now we're sitting here 
waiting for the carrots to cook. I want to, uh, you know, uh, this is out, which is dangerous because it looks like food. And do you know what it is? It's Leonard's beef recipe from the farmer's dog. After the dime incident and the pancreatitis and this terrible, you know, things with him, I researched into getting him fancy food. I'm gonna tell you something, man. This literally changed my dog. I mean, you can't see him because he's sleeping right now. But first of all, he jumps around to eat and he never showed any interest really in food. He jumps around like a dog in a commercial now when I put the food out. I swear to God, he's slightly better sighted and slightly better hearing. He's definitely fatter, which I love. I want him to be tubular. And uh, his stamina is different. His play times were getting shorter and now it's, they're not so short. Okay, this is blanched. Basically, I just put those in until they're slightly soft on the outside, said the actress to the bishop. That's what they look like, bright, bright orange. This is my Vitamix that Reggie gave me. I will tell you, um, it's kind of hard to make a puree without a Vitamix. I'm sorry to other companies. It's pureed, but it's not a puree. To make a real puree, you're supposed to take your puree, pour it over a tammy, which is those big circular sieves that you see, and then you push it with a plastic pastry pusher thing. I mean, like, nobody's doing that at home. So these are boiling hot and they're burning my hands. hi ya yay! Now, you're gonna make a beautiful cold little shooter and this is how easy it is. Boil carrots. Put in a little cold water, just enough to start the process. Put the top on the blender. Start blending. Ah, it's not plugged in. So you're, you're just starting the process with a little bit of water. You don't want to add too much water. That obviously needs more water. Okay. So now it's starting to puree. When you see the whirlwind on the top. Okay. I'm just gonna check the consistency. This is too thick. Okay. Oh, it's good though. So I wanna give you a word of warning about purees. I suggest taking a small piece of everything that you put in your puree and tasting it because one bitter piece of a turnip or a carrot will destroy your puree. That is really high level tip. Now also remember when you're making a puree, it's gonna get thicker when it cools. Oh, it's so good, it's not pureed yet. So I'm gonna put in a little lemon juice just to keep it bright. That time I used a sieve because I don't want seeds in here. Okay, now I'm gonna season it. it definitely needs salt. And I'm gonna use a couple of pieces of mint and because of the Vitamix, you can just throw those in. You don't want to put in so much mint that you color the puree, so you want to be careful. You can put a little curry in here if you want. Of course, a famous soup is carrot ginger. I'm going to put a tiny bit of sugar in it. Don't ask me why. Just to sweeten it a little bit make it even more carroty. So uh, an interesting cooking thing is food served cold that you made hot. The seasoning can be slightly stronger in the hot version because it will, uh, the, the seasoning will reduce as it cools, I mean, to your palate. It doesn't really reduce. <laughs> Almost done. This takes approximately eight minutes or something. Yum, put it in a deli. I mean, I don't know how you beat that. And then you, uh, you chill it in the fridge, you know, for as long as you can. And then when your guests come, you can use little ramekins. Oh, leave, leave this with air until it cools down. 
Uh, you can serve it in a little ramekin, you can serve it in an espresso cup, and you can put a little mint leaf on top, or you can put three drops of, you know, oil, boom, 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 or you can make mint oil or carrot oil, or you can just serve it straight out of the deli. <laughs> I usually let it um, cool to room temperature outside of the fridge, and then I put it in the fridge. This you can make three days before Thanksgiving. It's basically a smoothie and it'll stay totally great. In fact, it'll probably get better in a couple days. Carrot shooter, serve cold. <sniffs> Who's that gentleman at the bottom of the stairs? He seems like he knows what I look like without my chemise. My dear, he is not received. Um, we're going to make green packets, which is a recipe I believe from Bon Appetit from their Thanksgiving issue from quite a long time ago, but it's on Epicurious. You can put any filling in that you'd like, but this is a fabulous recipe and uh, it is demanded. Are you gonna make the green packets? Basically, it's stuffed collard greens. When you try to buy these at Thanksgiving, you're gonna have a hard time, it's just a word of warning, because people make a lot of collard green stuff around that time. And you're gonna probably do what I do, which is buy five or six bunches to get 10 or 12 beautiful leaves, it's a drag. And then I just boil the other ones and eat them. But the, uh, what you're looking for are gorgeous leaves. Now these came from Fresh Direct, if you can believe that. I mean, just cause they get, I mean, that is a perfect collard green. So you're looking for no holes. These have tiny holes, but who cares? We're only gonna make four because it's a, uh, I don't have a lot of mushrooms, but anyways. So I'm gonna pick out s six, leaves, because some of them will break in the boiling. And you want to get them without huge fat spines, like super mature leaves. That's a pretty mature leaf. It seems leathery to me, so I'm not going to use that one. These are the ones I'm going to boil. Nobody's going to eat this part, okay? Cut that part. Now you can, you can do that after you cook it, which is what we're going to do. I'm just going to put these in to the boiling water. Never miss an opportunity for flavor. So the boiling water has little peppercorns in it and uh, herbs and stuff like that. I mean, does it affect the collard green? Who knows? I'm just gonna put these in and boil them until they're quite soft, until this is going like this. Because we're gonna fold them into little squares. It's amazing. It's an amazing dish. As usual, the pot is too small and there's not enough water in it. So as they, as they cook, you'll see they go, it's like spaghetti. They go in better, there you go. Okay, now remember these don't matter because you're not gonna eat those. But you wanna be very gentle, okay? Because you need perfect leaves. So let these cook a little bit. You want the spines on the leaf part to be quite soft. Let's talk mushrooms briefly. Mushrooms. Um, there's lots of different kinds of mushrooms very beautiful kinds of mushrooms. I would highly recommend experimenting, guys. White mushrooms that you buy in the supermarket are flavorless. Branch out and try something different. Shiitakes you can find in most supermarkets. Um, Hen of the Woods, which is amazing, uh, which is the big one that looks like a, like a inside of a shell kind of. What does it look like? Coral. Looks like coral, right. And then chanterelles, my favorite known as girolles in, uh, in, in England, and porcinis, which are known as seps in England. What you're gonna do basically is chop these up pretty finely because they're gonna be inside your collard green packet. So the chanterelle, my God, how beautiful is that? It's gonna shrink, all right? So you don't want too small, that's good. And you're gonna do these sort of like this so that your filling is chunky and nice, right? If the quarters are too big, do it like that. The great thing about this dish is you can make it up to two days in advance and just put it in the refrigerator, dot it with butter, throw it in the oven and warm it for your meal. You may notice my knife has somebody's name on it. Whose name is that? Regina and I took a class with the incomparable Matt Abbe, Chef Matt Abbe, who's the head chef of restaurant Gordon Ramsay, who recently retained their three Michelin stars for the 19th year in a row. You can bring this cold and warm it at your friends. 
it's portable, but there's other dishes, you know, just to remind you if you want to go back to the archive, the broccoli rabe recipe, the roasted carrots or the carrot top pesto, root vegetable puree, the bread, any potato dish. So here you go, chopped mushrooms. Oh, Randy, did you get a vacuum sealer? No. This is just the dumb food saver. Um, but it's amazing. And it's perfectly good for sous vide. Look, I don't need the chamber vacuum sealer. I'm gonna chop some shallots. Cut through it like that, then you cut little hairs, kind of, and then... All right, I'm gonna take these out. Now the lemon I put in the water retains some of the color, but you do lose some color, guys. You're gonna lay these on the cloth Seam side up, okay? Seam side up, like this, okay? <laughs> Believe it or not, this is part of the process. <laughs> I'm gently drying them by turning them over and just going like that. Cut these up inside, not here. That's where you'd cut it usually, right? But you're gonna actually do this, okay? because you only want the tenderest part of this stem. That one's ready. Now you could fill these with anything you want, any kind of sauteed soft vegetable that's not going to uh, jar with the taste of collard greens. I don't know what that would be, but just, you know, think about what you're making. So now we're gonna make the filling, which is basically sauteing mushrooms with a little dried herbs and uh, shallots. And because it's holiday, they're sauteed in butter. And you distract your friends, you go, hey, look, you guys. So they don't see you do that. Look at the amount of mushrooms that you have. That's probably too much butter, but I'll just keep it on the side in case we need it. You wanna get this sizzling. I'm gonna throw in my shallots. I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, seasoning and a little bit of pepper. Now you can use fresh thyme. I've made it both ways. This is dried thyme from last year. So you're just gonna saute this until it's soft. Okay, they're soft, they're glistening. I'm gonna throw in my mushrooms. The pan's too small. You could even say the pan's way too small. <laughs> but it's a tradition here on dinner party tonight. And I'm just gonna saute these until they're basically cooked. Okay, now I would say we need this butter. This smells like beautiful Thanksgiving to me. You can make this two days in advance. I want these to be pretty soft or they'll poke through the collard green. I think they're hooking up my air conditioning unit. I got new AC, holy crap. My AC was from 22 years ago. And I'll be honest with you, it really sucked. It was sort of this sort of limp, moist caprice would come through the room, you know? Like it was really bad. I turned on the new system the other day to watch Great British Bake Off. So you want these, see how the edges are softening? That's what you want. I'm telling you, your friends are gonna freak out. We're in experimental theater, whatever the hell that means. But every year we do a children's play. Now we've done this play now for 18 years and it's called Seven in One Blow or The Brave Little Kid. And guess who two of the stars are? Regina? Get that money. And Lynn! Seven in one blow. Carry this large, I forgot when I bought it, saucepan over. Now, I don't know how many we're gonna be able to fill, but start with small amount of filling and see how you do it folding. I just thought of this the most genius thing ever. The super thick stems, shave them. So you just take your excellent knife and just go like that. I mean, I've been cooking for a long time. I never thought of doing that. Look at that. Take a slotted spoon. Put a little bit of filling in the center of your collard green. Just think about somebody eating this and you can figure out how much to put in. This is how you fold it. You go like this, like this, like this, and like this. Pick it up, turn it around, and place it in the dish. How beautiful is that? Okay, what movie is this from? We now have uncorrelated targets approaching from the north-northwest. 
I don't think we could have asked for a more beautiful evening, do you? Look how gorgeous those are. If you use like this one, you know, you can go like this. You can use a square dish, you can use whatever you want. But it's so beautiful. Now when you, when you warm it, there'll be a little liquor in the bottom. It'll come out of the packets and also the butter you dotted on top will melt down. So they're like softer and it's just superb. They, they disappear, there's never one left. What other leaf could you use? You could use Swiss chard. If you found a big enough piece of spinach, you could make small ones. I mean, Nick just had a great idea, actually, which I might do this actual Thanksgiving. He said, could you use cabbage? The only thing is, if it's super firm, you'd have to really cook it so you can fold it or just use the top part. I don't know, Nick. I think using Savoy cabbage or Napa cabbage with the wrinkly leaves would be so beautiful. It would be very much lighter than this though. I might try that. I think that could be yum. The only thing about cabbage is that the stem is different. It's wider and it's, it's thicker. But I think if you cooked it, it could be very good. Try it with cabbage, guys, why not? Green packets. Your friends will make a racket. This is how you finish the green packets. They're looking a little sad. They've been in the fridge, say, for a day or two. When you're ready to warm them, meaning they only need to warm, they're already cooked. You're gonna do this. You're gonna put a generous plop of butter and you're gonna plop it on top of each piece like that. This is just to make it glisten when you serve it. Pepper, I mean, I don't know. It's just to make it look extra nice. Sprinkling a little dried herbs on there wouldn't be a crazy idea. Then you're gonna take this, you're gonna put it in an oven to warm. If you're cooking your potatoes for the rest of your meal or anything like that, keep your eye on it because it doesn't need to cook. It just needs to warm. So you're gonna put it in at the end of your cooking cycle. Green packets ready to serve. Now you can put them in a different tray if you want. If you're plating, which I don't think you should do for Thanksgiving, um, you would, you know, put them on people's plates. Use a larger spatula than the thing if you're doing that. You can put more butter on them. You can put a tiny amount of stock in the bottom, but only a tiny amount. And uh, they're ready to go. You can garnish them. You can put cooked mushrooms if you have extra filling. You can sort of put cooked mushrooms. I did that last year. Actually, that's kind of beautiful. You put the mushrooms that you didn't use around them, sort of. It's lovely. We're gonna make something that might feel intimidating. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not intimidating. We're going to make something called chicken ballotine. What that is, is a rolled stuffed chicken breast. It's extremely simple. Uh, we're going to use a sous vide. You don't need a sous vide. You can poach this in, in water. I would like you to make this and make it with a debonair turkey leg. That's deboned. Can we please popularize saying debonair? <laughs> okay. Or a debonair turkey breast or a debonair chicken breast, which we're gonna use today to make chicken ballotine, which was extremely popular on MasterChef, the professionals UK, the second, close second greatest cooking show on television, starring Marcus Waring, Greg Wallace, and Monica Galletti. They're apparently finished shooting the new one, but God knows when it's gonna to come to the US. Anyway, we have GBBO to tide us over. The first thing you're gonna do is butterfly a chicken breast. Now, for the sake of full disclosure, I did do two practice runs, and I'm gonna tell you something, it's not easy. If you don't wanna do it, you go to the butcher, Hudson and Charles, in, our, in this case, the greatest butcher shop in New York City, for this kind of thing. They're a whole animal butcher. Kevin and Jay, who run the joint, are amazing, and they have pasture-raised chicken and everything. For sausage and pork products, definitely Fico is the best. Eddie Fico, the best. Ask them to butterfly and, and do it for you, and it, it'll be perfect. But let's, let's try. And of course, remember to tip your butcher. Butterflying a chicken breast. I discovered by going to Hudson and Charles that I was doing it from the wrong side. My instinct was to go from the fat side, but you want the fat side to be the join. You're gonna start from the part with the tender, which is the thin side. I'm gonna mess it up. 
but it doesn't matter because I got two from Hudson and Charles. And incidentally, if you mess it up, as you'll see when we assemble it, you can cover the hole with pancetta and stuff like that. You can, you can, you can fix it. I did it. I made five ballotines practice in one sitting for three guests. I'm gesticulating with the cutlery again. Um, for uh, David, uh, Paul, and his friend Michael Thatcher. They ate all five. They ate five ballotines. Okay, I'm gonna go in like this. Am I halfway? No one knows, right? Oh my God, that's the wrong knife. Not so bad. Not so bad. A uh, little hole. That's not so bad. That's the best one I've ever done. I'm probably gonna mess this one up, but. Ah. This is perforated. Okay, but it's okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know how somebody figured this out, but it kind of makes sense. You're gonna take a bag like this and you're gonna open it. So the air pressure doesn't perforate the bag. You're gonna open it on both sides like that. Okay, you're gonna put the chicken breast like this. So this is my superb one. This is my less superb one. And you're gonna hammer this. We're gonna hammer it, not with this side. Why? Obviously, because it'll perforate the bag. We're gonna hammer it with the flat side. The reason you wanna use a plastic bag is if you use chicken from a death house, from a horrible facility, the chances of it having salmonella are high, okay? If you buy pasture-raised and humanely processed chicken, your chances of salmonella are lower. It's also $7 a pound. I say don't eat meat so often and buy the $7 a pound one. But anyway, you are hammering a piece of chicken. Stuff is gonna go, so you wanna keep the plastic on. And you can hammer it, but make sure you don't perforate it. You wanna hammer it sort of flat. It's already kind of wanting to perforate. You know how you use a hammer? People go like this. The, all the boys in the room know that you don't. You use the hammer. Same thing with a knife. Don't cut, let the knife do the work. I mean, that's a classic Gordon thing. Let the knife do the work, which is why you need a sharp knife. So if you go like this, you're doing the work. So you wanna let the hammer do the work. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. It could, it could probably be a little thinner, but it's gonna roll. Look at that, it's gonna roll beautifully. And I'm gonna hammer this one. But da na 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 ba da ba dum bum. It it perforated a little bit. Yeah, th this one ended up breaking. Now shall we compare? <laughs> shall we compare Hudson and Charles? Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mine look terrible now. Ooh. It's perfect. It's totally perfect. Okay, now we're gonna make the filling, which is luxurious, uh, fatty, unctuous, yummy. Um, and we're gonna start with these amazing packs of pre-cut pancetta, which are the bomb. <laughs> so you're gonna heat up your pan. That should have made a noise, but it didn't. You're gonna pour all of one pack or chop up enough pancetta that it looks like that. You can use the bacon, but here's the deal. This is just to, it, for moisture. The other thing you should consider doing is brining those breasts before you cook them, which I did both other times. Um, they're very thin, so the chances of it drying out are, are low. But if you wanna just drop them in a brine for a couple of hours before you cook them and then dry them off and do this, you have a higher chance of deliciousness. Okay, we're gonna just fry off this pancetta until it's releasing its, its fat. I'm now gonna throw in our shallots. Let's talk about 90 Day Fiance. Did everybody see the guy grab the girl around the neck? And she goes, I can't live without him. And I'm like, uh, you might want to consider living without him. Because when he was mad at her, he put his arm around her neck and pulled her neck like this. Yeah. And it was, uh, it's Rebecca and um, the guy who's, who says, so beautiful, so much I love you. But to grab somebody around the neck and pull them like this, that's the sign of bad things to come. I'm gonna throw a little butter in here, why not? Boop. Oh yes, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. 
Okay, I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to wilt the spinach. It's going to take approximately two seconds. Don't let your friends see this. Doesn't matter how clean it is, it's not, not chic. This is going to disappear in about three seconds. So I'm going to put in a little bit more. And then when this is slightly wilted, I'm going to season it. I think I'm going to throw a little teeny bit of white wine in here. Never cook with wine you wouldn't drink. What time is it, Reg? 1.26. How far do we have to go before cocktails? Okay, see how quickly that reduced to loveliness? Now I'm just going to taste a piece of spinach. Oh, it's yummy. Need salt. Just do this to taste. I don't think it needs more salt because we're also going to use prosciutto, so we want to be careful with the salt. Little pepper. Okay, this is ready. Rolling a ballotine. Don't worry about the ends, okay? You're going to cut the ends off. And they're also going to fold in and mold a little bit. So don't worry about them. And we're going to start with this one. You want to line the, the chicken breast with prosciutto. Or you can use speck. Just you, you're making like a prosciutto bed for your filling. And it also releases fat while it's cooking, which is good. It doesn't have to be neat. Well, actually, the neater it is, the better your cut will be, but it's okay. If you break your chicken breast irreparably, you can kind of cover the hole with this, which is what I did, and it worked. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper and a teeny bit of salt. Now I'm going to put filling in the center. You can make a, a bed of filling, but you want it thinner on either end, thicker in the middle. This is a little bit stressful, <laughs> this part. David and I discovered that you sort of need two people to do this, but I'm going to try and do it alone so I can prove to you that it can be done. This should have been on a piece of plastic, so I've already made one mistake. Okay. All right. Do one fold like this, tighten it, and then keep on turning it so it looks like that. Take your saran wrap. Put it over the entire ballotine. Do not roll the plastic wrap up in the ballotine. All right? Now this is a rather large one, okay? Which is good. Then you wanna do like this. Keep it as tight as you can. Then, we don't have a lot of space here because it's a big ballotine, but you're gonna twist the edges like this and kind of go like this. This is press and seal. Put this down, twist the end, and you're gonna go like this. And that's ready to be sous vide. It's not a bad idea to put it in the refrigerator for a little bit, not so it gets cold, but so uh, it sets a little bit, it sets up in the shape you want. I'm gonna do this again, pulling it tight. Folding in the, the bottom, rolling it, pulling it tight, rolling it, and folding under. Perfect. Okay, the rest we're going to do the same thing. Uh, you can wrap them in skin. You can use the skin as the very outside part of the ballotine. Then you fry it, and it has crispy skin. But the, you know, it's, I, I, I haven't done that. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper with the thinner ones. It can't have a thick filling, but maybe that's not so bad. All right, here we go, last one. Na 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 na, 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 na na, ooh, that's a good one. Na 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 na, na 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 na, ba 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 ba. Don't squeeze it too hard, said the actress to the bishop. Twist in opposite directions, which I can't do because my hands are too greasy. Right, fold it under. Is it big enough? Is it strong enough? It's got a lot of holes. It's press and seal. Okay. Basically just concealing. Then we're gonna do another little saran wrap on this one. Now, if you're gonna poach it, you're gonna poach it in, um, the same directions you would use to poach 
a piece of chicken in lightly boiling water. In our case, we're gonna use the sous vide, which I've heated up to 149. We're gonna put it in here for approximately 90 minutes. I think it's dangerous to put this in because it's not fully sealed. So I'm gonna use a, another plastic bag. If you've sealed it correctly, you can reuse these bags. So I'm gonna put two in one. Try and get all the air out that you can. You're gonna put your thing in the sous vide. Don't start timing. Okay, it's floating. It can't be floating. So what do you do? You fill up a cup with water and you set it on your sous vide bag. And you can use a clip to hold the bag so it doesn't go underwater. Look for any perforation, anything in the water. Okay, and start your timer, 90 minutes. I'm going to my Juul app, set timer. Now we're cooking. There's another product, it's called, A what's it called, Aveno or something? There's another sous home sous vide, um, equally good, I think. Does it look a little hillbilly? Absolutely. <laughs> You know, you got a, this, this is cool. This is called a Cambro. Uh, you can use pots and then it looks even more hillbilly with the, the, the cups jiggling in the, in the pot. Mike and I always send each other pictures of sous vide because it's so like bootleg looking. All right, there you go, 90 minutes and it's gonna be perfection. <laughs> good boy. Ah, oh, he's so good. I'm gonna turn off my machine. If you poached it, you just lift it out of the water. Clips off, ballotine bag out. You can tell it's fully cooked. I'm gonna unwrap the ballotine, which is quite difficult. What you wanna do is cut it, but don't cut your ballotine, which I just did. When I go to Clyde, my hairdresser, I was like, cut it, Clyde, come on. Cut it all, Clyde, come on. I mean, I don't have my haircuts going out now, but he does do a good haircut. Oh boy. Now, it looks wan because it's been in the sous vide, but when you sous vide it or poaching it, you are preserving the moistness of the chicken. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna sear this simply because it has no color. We're gonna start the sear in a high smoke point oil so that we can get a sear before the oil burns. Hot pan, olive oil. That's right. Except in this case, we're not gonna use olive oil. And you don't want to use butter until you're finishing it because butter will burn very quickly. Wet food does not sear. So what you want to do is very gently, these are falling apart a little bit, which is all right, we don't care. Dry your ballotine. Now it's a touch fragile, but all you have to do is get to the slicing and you're home free. So I'm slightly drying it so that it'll pick up the sear. These are ready. You don't want a lot of oil. We have, the, we have the door open. You're gonna hear lots of noises. We have the window open because it's gonna make smoke, okay? And you wanna make sure this is ripping hot because you're only gonna do this for a few seconds. So I'm gonna do the two small ones. So the actress to the bishop. Pan could be hotter. In fact, yeah, now I can't do it because it won't release. So never move meat in a pan that, that doesn't naturally release it. Don't try and force it, let it seal. That's a big, big, big cooking mistake. People get nervous about fish. It's stuck, it's stuck, it's stuck. Just wait, it's gonna release. I'm gently pressing. I'm gonna put butter in in a second. And we're gonna sort of fry it in butter and oil. I, I've been in a few house fires. Have you guys ever been in a house fire? No. I've been in two. Um, they're absolutely terrifying. One of them was in a rental house and we destroyed the house. My boyfriend and I, Matt Henderson, decided that the smartest thing to do would be to take all of the upholstered things outside. The firemen took apart the, you know, they demolished the kitchen. It was a bad scene. And so we took everything outside and then uh, went to party and left the rental house's entire upholstered stuff outside and it sheet, sheet rained. So not only was their kitchen destroyed, but everything they owned was destroyed by yours truly. Okay, you wanna turn these now? 
beautiful, beautiful. If it won't turn, don't force it. A little trick is putting it up against the side to get color on all four sides. That's a beautiful one. Oh, it's about to open. I'm just going to sear the other side of this one and then we're done with that one. I mean, I don't know. Is that beautiful or what? Okay, I'm going to slice the ballotine. This is the moment of truth. So I'm going to take a little tiny piece off the end, use a sharp knife. I'm really happy with that. Don't cut it too thin. You can see the prosciutto, you can see all the layers. Dude. How is that, Reg? It isn't good. <laughs> In my opinion, this would look extremely beautiful around the turkey. So if you made a ballotine with a debonade turkey leg or a debonade chicken breast, right? Just like this, and you put it like this, like a garnish almost around the turkey. How gorgeous is that? Chicken ballotine, debonade chicken breast, debonade turkey breast, Debonade turkey, leg. Try a ballotine. Don't be afraid. If you're, if you're poaching it, just go like this. Maybe put it in a plastic bag. Maybe rubber band the plastic bag and just drop it in the water. Make sure it's submerged. I think it's 18 minutes, but I can't remember. Uh, if you have sous vide, do it sous vide. But uh, you don't need a sous vide to do it. Um, this is a perfect dish. Now, I want to point out that if you're doing a Thanksgiving for two, you can take your debonade poultry and basically this would be your Thanksgiving, okay? So it doesn't have gravy on it or anything right now, but I'm just saying this, you can stuff it with stuffing. You can stuff it with stuffing with mushrooms, stuffing with chestnuts, stuffing with anything you'd like and roll the big uh, debonade leg or something. You won't go to the galatine if you make a ballotine. Let's talk about pie. Now Thanksgiving is a pie heavy holiday. We have a pie competition. I make the entire feast and then people who'd like to compete bring a pie. It's been pretty interesting. We've had eight pies. We've had four pies. We've, you know, there's first, second, third, or honorable mention, and then there's the Juan Oliveira Soto Exemplary Award for Culinary Excellence, and I'll tell you how it goes. Myself and a guest who didn't prepare a pie, it's been Edgar the past three holidays, and Juan take all the pies in the kitchen that are delivered blank in a blank box, and they each get a number, and then we open the boxes with the doors closed. And we taste a slice of each pie. Then we rank them one, two, or three. Then we add up the numbers and the person with, you know, etc. And then there's a special prize that Juan, Juan is the guy who helps me on big holidays, like the, for kitchen help, extreme kitchen help. So then Juan picks somebody on his own and they win the Juan award. And we've had people who've won several years in a row and you know, maybe, I mean, it's incredible. But we've also had people who've never won, like Paul's never won. I think he got honorable mention last year, or Carrie did, I should say. Anyways, we're gonna make pie. We're gonna make a blackberry pie that if it was entered would win. And I'm gonna show you the simplest pie crust on planet Earth. This is two and a half cups of regular flour, which I'm going to pulse in the food processor. Then I'm going to add some salt and a little bit of sugar. A little bit of sugar. Bloop, 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 bloop. Now, you can add lemon zest, cardamom. You can add a lot of things to this dry, dry part. I'm adding vanilla bean seeds, which are sold by William Sonoma. These are expensive, but it's really convenient because it's dry. You can see it's like powder. So I, I like to put a little bit of this in there and it gives the pastry a nice vanilla flavor. I wouldn't put seeds from the pod because they'll just clump into a clump with the flour around them. So I wouldn't do that. Pulse to combine. Get freezing cold butter. I like Lure Pack for this. You can put the butter in the freezer, okay? And 
it just makes it a little harder to chop. But you're going to take this quite cold butter. Lurpak is good. Plugra is good. You don't want to use these butters like these fancy Irish butters and stuff. I'll tell you the reason why. They're too fatty. And they, they're too soft. And they, they, they melt before you can mix your, your dough. Cut this in half. This is two sticks. <laughs> A stick per pie crust, which is not so crazy when you think about it. I'm going to cut this in half like this. And then I'm going to cut it into small cubes quickly before it gets warm, like that. I would like to make this pie for my cousins. They're going through a kind of a rough time, and I would love to make a pie for them. I wish she, would you guys please come over for pie, Paul and Carolyn? Different Paul. What pies have won, you might ask? Well, Eric, my actor Spencer's husband and also a very dear friend, won the first year they came to Thanksgiving with the first pie he'd ever made. Basically, you're just going to go like this, sprinkle all these cubes. Some of them, these are really big, but that's okay. And then we're just going to, we're going to pulse this, blip, 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 until it looks like sandy pebbles. It's my new name, Lynn. Sandy pebbles. Yes. So, so then I look at it. I still see large pieces. I'm going to take a look like this, and I'm going to feel it. Oh, it feels like sandy pebbles. Here's the exciting part. I'm going to add an egg yolk. Why? It makes it kind of rich and beautiful. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. Um, I want to say something about the president of Rough Linen, Trisha Rose. She's been so kind to me and responded to my letters and everything. Obviously, we wear her aprons and adore them, and so many fans do as well. I just had three custom tablecloths I commissioned from her. But she wrote me to tell me that she knew Fanny Craddock and worked with her on television, which I guess she was 10 years old or something. But uh, I think that's a hilarious link to us that she actually worked as a PA for Fanny Craddock or something. I'm not sure what her job was. And she also worked for Glenn something, who was called the Galloping Gourmet. You guys are too young to remember the Galloping Gourmet. And she used, used to work for him, too. I'm going to pulse this with the egg yolk, OK? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on, not pulse, and I'm going to dribble this water in. You'll get good at this. If you've never done it, don't worry, OK? It's, it's flour, and it's, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. And you're going to see an incredible transformation. Don't panic. Something's happening. Something's happening! What's happening? Look at this. What's happening? Hold on. It's going to go. Don't put too much water. Don't panic. I need it to go around. It's going to do it right now. Dough. See that? Tell me that's not a miracle. Perfection. It's a tiny bit wet, but that doesn't really matter. It's because I slightly panicked at the end because I'm shooting. This is pie dough. Don't mess with it. Cut this in half because we're making a two-sided pie. So the first time you do it, if you've never done it, you might make it too wet and just make it too loose, and then you honestly have to start again. If it's too dry, just go little by little by little and then wait. And then suddenly, it'll turn into dough. It's the most incredible thing. Just go like this, flatten it into a circle, and wrap it in cellophane. I like to make it look nice because I think it makes better dough if it has a better opinion of itself. Completely fold it. Fold it under like this and like this. And then when you have it like this, kind of make sure it's lovely, like it doesn't have any breaks in the top surface. Like it looks like that. Smooth and beautiful. Okay? Where's the other one? Here it is. Now this does take some forward thinking because it is better that you do this a little in advance. Overnight is fine. This should be in the refrigerator for at least two hours, OK, to uh, essentially set up. It has to kind of stiffen up. The butter has to re-harden, sort of. So then you're going to put this like this. Make sure it feels nice about itself. I'm telling you, it matters, all right? And then put this in the fridge. When Reggie and I took the class with Matt Abbe, 
He said that chefs that use a lot of flour when they're rolling out pastry don't know what they're doing. But the bottom line is he's a Michelin, three Michelin star chef. You're going to need a little bit of flour. But not a lot, because you don't want big dots of raw flour in your pastry, OK? But you do want to keep it moving. So you never want to roll it in one position. You want to always be doing like this, OK, so that you know it can move. And you want to go 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock turn. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And then you want to keep it moving so you know that it's okay. I'm talking and moving quickly because um, it's starting to melt a little bit. Even though it's not puff, you still have to be careful. This is a French rolling pin. In my opinion, it's much better than the other kind. A little bit of flour, not too much. The reason why you do the clock is so that you make it even thickness, okay? And don't worry about it. It's not going to bite you. If it cracks, you just push it back together. OK, this is getting a little sticky here. Almost there. I can almost see the marble, so I want to stop. This, I think, is stuck, so I'm just going to try rolling it a little bit up off the surface. Oh, it ripped. Don't panic. Now, we did a little repair, but nobody's going to see that. Make sure it's sitting down and there's no air on the side. So I had to do a small patch job, but I have a big piece right here that I can use, which is great. I'm just going to flatten that. Now, this pie doesn't use a blind bake, which is when you put the pie crust in and slightly cook it before you put the filling. The reason you do that is if you're filling would cook before your pie crust would cook. Like some custards cook faster than pie. So you blind bake it empty before you put the filling in. OK, good. So I'm just going to go ahead and be happy with that. And then I'm going to make a little design around the edges. Now, just go like this. Oh my god, it's so cute. Now, it's a simple rim. It's very thin and lovely. You can do much fancier. You can cut them out with shaped things. You can do all that stuff. But I think this is really cute. This you can do certainly the night before. You know, if you come back from dinner and you feel like you're up for it, do it the night before. If you can do it in the morning, that's slightly better. Now, I'm going to put this back in the fridge because I don't want it to melt. Great. Now we're going to make the filling. We're going to take, uh, these are, this is four pints. So we're just going to take most of these, OK? Leaving maybe that many. And they want you to put half a cup of sugar and half a cup of flour and put it on the berries. All right, so that's ready. We're, now we're going to make the top crust. So you want to make sure this is completely dry. I just rewatched Harold and Maude. It's, it is now available on. Uh, Netflix, which it wasn't before. It just, oh my god. Hal Ashby, what can you say? Do you know Cat Stevens is in the movie? If you ever watch it, which you should watch it tonight, uh, Cat Stevens is at the grave site at, in the very beginning of the movie when he meets Maud for the first time, basically. Cat Stevens is there. He has a hat. and You can see he has a beard and everything. I'm sorry I'm not calling him by his new name. I, I can't remember it. I know it's Yousef something, but I can't, sorry. I saw something and I found an old, beautiful Bon Appetit Thanksgiving from last year. Now it's like the porno days, right? Like you get the porno food magazines, the Bon Appetit, food, uh, food and Wine, Martha. Those are all the Thanksgiving issues. They're the best. But I found an old one and I was looking at it last night. They had a, a lattice top called Lattice As You Will. Part of it was woven and part of it wasn't, which was Really kind of beautiful, actually. So I think we're going to try that. Now I'm going to be a full disclosure. I've never done a lattice top. So I'm going to put a little bit of flour, not a lot. So here's my, now this is a little easier because I don't have to make a perfect circle. So you, want, you don't want big globs of raw flour, guys, OK? So just stick it back together. It just means it's slightly too cold, but that's OK. Stick it back together. OK, I'm turning this constantly, as you see. I'm sticking it back together. Never panic. Never panic. 
a little bit of flour. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Turn. It's kind of like watching paint dry, but whatever. We're holding in, holding in. We're doing some dough, it's a crazy show. We're doing some dough, it's a crazy show. This is a, what is it called? Kuhn Recon pastry scraper. It's awesome. Okay, I'm just gonna make this a teeny bit bigger. Okay, now it's soft, so now it's time sensitive. I guess I'm gonna try to do a lattice, so let's think about the pie. So I'm gonna make a straight edge here. I'm doing thick. Piece one. Piece two. Piece three, it's kind of a big one. So you see the last piece, which is the warmest piece, stuck. Oh my goodness, it thought the pepper. Here's my pie crust. I don't take part in the pie competition. I just make the entire dinner. Now you'll find after it's been in the fridge, you can do more with it because it's firmed up a bit. Crimp it a little more aggressively, if you know what I mean. Now you can also put a fork like this. Do we want to do that? We don't want to do that. Okay. I'm moving a little bit of this flour around. There we go. Now they want you to put the rest of the berries on top. And I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice on top of this, just a little bit, half a lemon. So what I'm doing now is I'm making an egg wash. This is just a beaten egg. So I'm taking a short piece and I'm gonna stick it with a little bit of egg wash, okay? And crimp it, recrimp it. Never done this before. So then this would go here, right? So in the one that I read, which I thought was so cute, they didn't weave every piece. Only a couple of pieces were woven, which I thought was really sort of chic. Okay, I'll egg wash that. I'll put this one here. I'll just do this one, oh my God. It's melting. The crust is melting. We did it. So now I'm gonna pretty it up a little bit. I'm gonna reinforce it where it looks weak, nobody knows. Now I'm gonna brush the entire top with uh, egg wash. We're gonna see what happens. They want you to brush it with milk, uh, that doesn't seem right to me. So I'm not doing that. Now I'm gonna sprinkle some sugar all over this bad boy. Oh boy! I think it should set in the fridge for a second. Pastry is one of the few things that you want to cook cold. They want you to cook it this in a very hot oven. 425 for 15. Don't know if you guys saw my marathon timer. It's very chefy. 15 minutes in a hot oven and then reduce it to 375 for 20 minutes. It goes in this very, very hot oven for 15 minutes. I'll start the timer when I get back to my seat. Oh my God, who's here? It's the reigning pie champion, Eric Savage. Tell me, Eric, how many times have you won? Three. And your first pie, you'd made a lot of pies before then, haven't you? Actually, no, I'd only made one. You mean that was your first pie? Yes, that was my, that was my very first Sorry. pie. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And your about... second pie you won with, what pie was that? It was a pear and pomegranate molasses pie. And your third pie you won with, what was that? It was a brown butter and apple pie. And tell me, have you ever won the Juan Oliveira Soto Exemplary Culinary Excellence Award? Not yet. Maybe this year. I'm now going to lower the temperature to around 370. I don't have fives on this, so I'm gonna do 370. And if I don't like the way that looks, I'll go up to 380, but I think it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna stick with uh, 370 for an additional 20 minutes or something like that. Hmm, I don't know. 
Hmm. What do you think, Eric? Reminds me of a pie I once made. Does it? Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of it. It does have a rip right there, but what can you do? It's very shiny and buttery and yes. fruity and delicious looking. I can care. Yeah, very exciting. Carrot shooters. Bright, minty, lemony, and a great stall tactic. Green packets. Bursting with chanterelle and porcini, shallots and herbs, dotted with butter, a glistening, gorgeous, collard green side. Chicken ballotine, debonade chicken breast, stuffed with prosciutto, pancetta, shallots, spinach, and of course, our old friend, butter. Blackberry pie, crispy, tart, sweet, delicious. Yeah, that's pretty good. My name is Turkey. I live downstairs from you. Yes, I think you've heard me before. Come on, come on, come on. Brian gave me this turkey. Isn't he so sweet? Today we made some beautiful Thanksgiving sides. Now, if you are serving a Thanksgiving for two, and may I say a two I might select, might be Miss Regina and Joe, who recently got engaged. Congratulations, Joe! I mean, I couldn't be more thrilled. Um, but if you're, if you're doing a Thanksgiving for two or four or three or something, um, the things we made today could be your entire meal. Let's not forget our friend, the pie champion, Eric Savage. And I have to tell you that the truth is, the truth is that Eric is actually my stage manager at the theater. So we spend every night in the booth together and maybe I'll post an Instagram picture. But Eric also uh, works, he's the head of uh, the bespoke wallpaper department at Alpha Workshops, which makes incredible interior finishes. I uh, checked them out online, they're amazing, and he's the president of the wallpaper department. Is that, is <laughs> yes, that right? That's correct. Thank Bespoke you. wallpaper, <laughs> some of which is so beautiful, you, you don't even know if you have a place good enough to put that wallpaper, it's so gorgeous. Thank you so much. But we've been doing uh, Edgar's play together. Yes. And it's been a massive hit. It has, we've been, we're sold out for the rest of sold the Sold out, and it's uh, been an amazing year for us. It's been a good year. Yeah, it's yeah. been fantastic. I think 2020 might be even better. And we just wanna say, even though Eric doesn't have a drink, cause he's just drinking seltzer. <laughs> we just, pick it up, pick it up. We just wanna say, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. We're doing some dough, it's a crazy show. 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 We're doing some dough, it's a crazy show.